the Lord, we are welcome to the National Restoration Altar. You know, this uh, glorious day, we, tr we thank God who has been uh, gracious unto us. Hallelujah. So we are going to continue our teaching on uh, the ethics of Christian ministry. We have so far looked at 18, I mean 14 ethics of Christian ministry. I will say ethics are what? They are moral principles. Ordinary company, businesses have ethics, work ethics. Amen? So everything that we stand and that we prosper, that will be prosperous, every organization has, has what? Has ethics. So the Christian ministry also have ethics. And how do we get our ethics? They are there in the Bible. The rascality we see in Christian ministry is because of what? Because the ethics of ministry have been neglected. So people are just interested in the goodies. They think that godliness is gain. So people run into ministry because they want to, because it's a means of making money, a means of becoming famous. Amen. The Lord will help us in Jesus' name. Amen. We, we are counting down to the feast of rapture. We are doing what? Counting down. The feast of rapture starts on the 1st of February, 1st, 2nd, and 3rd. Arrival for those who are coming from far outside Lagos is uh, 31st. The camp is open on 31st. So we still enjoy more people to come. And if you cannot come, you can sponsor a missionary from the north or from the south. So people that transport is as much as 30,000 to and fro, some up to 40,000 to and fro. So the Lord will help graciously help us in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. So the election is drawing closer and the Lord is on the throne. We are seeing the visible hand of God and we know the Lord is going to deliver this nation this time in the name of Jesus. Amen. The wicked men will not rule us any longer in this nation. Terrorists will not rule us again. But compassionate and loving people, righteous men, men of integrity and capacity will be the one to rule us in Jesus' name. Amen. Praise the Lord. So the teaching on ethics, so if you want to know more about the Feast of Rapture, the our annual ministers and missionaries retreat, this is the 10th edition and it's so dear to us. Amen. So it will be holding at the Bethel Camp, that is Assemblies of God Camp, Lagos about the Expressway. It's not far from the Redemption Camp. So you can locate Bethel Camp. You can, you can be part of that meeting. It's an exclusive camp meeting. You get there. We are not only leaving there to finish on Friday night. Then by Saturday morning, you are returning back. Praise the Lord. So you can support. You can participate. You can sponsor somebody. Amen. So the whole essence of the Christian ethics that we have been, you know, emphasizing. This is uh, the 17th message in this series. 17th message. So if you have missed any of the message, you can go to the Global Christian Updates TV on YouTube, or you go to Global Christian Updates TV on the on the Facebook. You get it if you have missed any of the series. Is a teaching to follow. Amen. Amen. So let's look at First uh, Timothy chapter four verse sixteen. Tells us why this teaching is very very important. First Timothy chapter four verse sixteen. You know, give us a picture why the teaching on ethics, ethics, or moral principles of Christian ministry or Christianity is very important. Amen. Are you there? Life uh -huh. and doctrine He said, watch how many? Your life and doctrine. Your life and your what? And your doctrine. Two your key life. things. A minister must watch what? His, his life. life and his what? And his doctrine. How? Closely. Closely. Uh-huh. Persevere in them. Persevere in them. Because if you do, if you do, you will save both yourselves mm -hmm. and your hearers. Mm -hmm. Watch what? What do you watch? Let me All see right. from another version. From NLT. This is NLT. Keep a close watch on how you live mm -hmm. and on your teaching. Mm -hmm. Stay true to what is right for the sake of your own salvation and the salvation of those who hear you. Now, which salvation are you talking about here? I'm talking salvation. about the final salvation. <laughs> There are two salvation. There is what we call the initial salvation, which is your born again experience. And there's what is called the final salvation, which is what? Your final salvation. 
Which is what? The rapture. See, because the church age will wind up at the rapture. That is the final salvation. Where Jesus will come and save the world, will come and save the righteous, come and take the righteous to with him. That's the final salvation. Say, pay what? Close attention to what? Wonder. What do you say, your own? Keep a close watch on how you live how and your teaching. How you live and your teaching. Keep what? A close attention on what? On how you live and on what? On your teaching. For if you do, what happened ahead? You didn't finish your own. And if you do, what happened? Stay true to what is right mm -hmm. for the sake of your own salvation and the salvation of those who hear you. Stay true to what is what? Right. What is stay true? The right kind of life and the right kind of what? Doctrine. For which salvation? The life you live and the things you teach can affect your word. Your own salvation. And what? And the salvation of those who hear you. So many have backslidden because of what their pastors, the doctrine, the teaching of their pastors. Have you also? So many have fallen because of what? The life of their, of their pastors. A lot of our young yesterday living waywardly is because of the way their pastor's wife is living. They were because of what? The way their pastor's wife is living. So many people are into a manner of perverse life. Where did they learn it from? Because you, you, your life and your doctrine is what people learn from. You impact with your life and your own. And your teaching. Praise the Lord. Amen. So this morning, we are going to look at one of those things that uh, the minister of the gospel must uh, he say, hold on to what is what. You always say what? To what is right. What is truth. Part of the things that we need to hold on to is what we're going to be examining this morning, which is the 15th ethics of Christian ministry. Before we go there, let's see a scripture that I'll address what we're talking about today. Proverbs, uh, I think, 28, verse 15 of Proverbs 28. That will all shout us into what we want to discuss this morning. Proverbs 16, 28. We are funny to read for us. Amen. Yeah, there you read for us. Oh, Proverbs, no, Proverbs 28, 15. Sorry. Proverbs 28, 15. Who is reading for us? Like a running lion mm -hmm. or a charging bear. Mm -hmm. It's a wicked man who lives over a helpless You say what? Uh -huh. Or a charging beer. Mm -hmm. He's a wicked man ruling over a helpless people. Hey, like what? A rowing what? Lion. Is what? And like what? No, a, a, like charging a charging beer. beer. He's okay. a wicked man. He's a wicked man. Ruling over a helpless people. Our people have become helpless in the hand of our rulers. The people of our nations, African nations, have become helpless in the hands of their rulers. The Asian have become helpless in the hands of their rulers. The Chinese people have to have to have, have to begin, have to stage a massive protest. Massive one. Because their wicked leader locked them down in the name of COVID-19. The people were dying and they were suffering. Wicked leaders. I watched a clip whereby the, the CEO of Pfizer, you know, you know, one of the pharmaceutical companies that produced the COVID-19 vaccine, you know, he was going and they were asking him, how come you said your vaccine is 100% when it began, it's 100% uh, you know, who stopped COVID-19. And later you say, no, it's a 40, a 40, 40%. Later, it was discovered that the, the vaccine cannot, cannot in any way, you know, even, even treat COVID-19. And he began to sell booster. They were asking him, Tell us how come what happened? They were told to follow him. You know, you know this. I'm always a, a white journalist now. He was moving. We were following him. They said, "Tell us how come? How do you feel that many people have died and then you have become you have become a, a multi billionaires?" Okay, that's okay. He refused. He was he refused to talk. They said, "Tell us what what apology do you have since your vaccine failed? Do you have apology?" He refused to talk. He refused to talk. We get men. Collude with our leaders of nations. 
and he used people's life to make to make money. Wicked men. They fought on the top and removed the top because the refused to work. Refused to work. He was trying, he was fighting against it. He, didn't, he knew something was wrong about, about the, whole, the whole idea. And they had to claim up the way. It's not only here. Those who lost their word, they are like what? They are like some passion say evening wolves. Let me see what your passion says. The James Passion. Proverbs 28, 15. Let me see what the James Passion says. As a roaring lion and a roaring bear and a raging bear, hmm. so is a wicked ruler over the poor people. Hey! Roaring lion and what? Raging bear. And raging bear, so is what? Is a wicked ruler over a what? A poor people. That is what has become. Look at our nation now. It's not just only Nigeria. Wicked rulers over a poor people. Over an oppressed. Let me see what NIV says. Or NET. Okay, I think I read from NET. A Who? wicked ruler is as dangerous to the poor as a roaring lion or an attacking bear. A wicked ruler is at what? Is as dangerous. Dangerous to what? To the poor. To the poor. As a roaring lion or an attacking bear. It's as dangerous. And go to chapter 29. Let's see what 29 says. The same proverb. The next verse. The next chapter. 29 from verse 1. You can Whoever read. stubbornly refuses to accept criticism will suddenly be destroyed beyond recovery. Continue. When the godly are in authority, the people rejoice. But when the wicked are in power, they groan. The man who loves wisdom brings joy to the okay, When the word, the James, when the wicked are in authority, the people, the people rejoice. Are you sure the Bible says? Mm. But when the wicked groan, what happens? They grow. The people grow. What do you want to say? The people mourn. The people mourn. When the wicked are in the they wicked are in. But when righteous people are in trouble, what happens? The people rejoice. Hallelujah. Yeah. So, one of the ethics of Christian ministry is that a minister of the gospel <laughs> must partner with God in establishing the rule of the righteous. What do I say? The minister of the gospel is God's partner in establishing righteous government in the nations. So the minister of the gospel must what? He must partner with Jehovah in the selection and the what? And the what? And the installation of what? Of a righteous leader, of a godly leader, because when the wicked are you know, in in bear rules, the word, the word, the the word, they they become like what, like roaring lion to the poor. They become like charging bears. Dangerous. The okay. dangerous. They are what. The wicked ruler is as dangerous to the poor. Dangerous to the poor. We are not wiser. The Lord says the wicked ruler are what? Are as dangerous to the poor, like what? Like the lion and what? And the charging bears. So they must not be allowed to rule. Because in their rule, what happens? The people mourn. The people groan. So it now behoves, it's a, it's, 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 it's a heavenly responsibility of the ministers of the gospel to partner with God in ensuring, in what? In what? In ensuring that it is the righteous that get to the throne of leadership. It is what? It is part of the mandate of the minister. So a minister must understand that Part of his cardinal assignment to the nation to which God has called him to disciple the people is what? Is to ensure that what? That the righteous get to the throne. Therefore, it becomes his responsibility to, to disciple the righteous to rule. What do I say? The minister has the responsibility to what? To disciple righteous men to rule. He has the responsibility to what? To refuse that wicked men will not rule. Because the wicked are what? They are dangerous to the poor. Like what? Like the lion. And like the bear. Praise the Lord. They are what? They are very dangerous. 
Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. So, you see where we missed it? The people that have the responsibility to what? To stop the wicked from ruling, but ensure the word. Ensure that the word, the righteous and authority have failed in their responsibility. Amen. So that you can what? You can save both yourself and your word and your hearers. So the teaching of the word, of the of the word, of the of the minister, like what we saw, that what we saw now, and his life is meant to enforce. Amen. Meant to what? To raise what? He's supposed to raise righteous men to rule. He's supposed to ensure that righteous men are enthroned. That is part of the responsibility of the ministers of the gospel. Praise the Lord. Somebody must say, eh, Pastor Gospel is always talking about politics. He's quoting the Old Testament. He's talking about kings, Abi. Don't be so. Let's go to the New Testament. We have quoted how many versions now? Two Bible verses now, Abi. Yes. Proverbs chapter 28, verse 15, and what? 29, verse 2, Abi. Let's go to the. Uh, uh, I, I, I may decide to keep quoting now New Testament if I want to, if there is time for us. For us to understand that, see, this issue of leadership, it was not an Old Testament thing alone. Apostle Paul taught it. Because he is an apostle of the Gentiles. He taught, he taught, he taught, he taught that was what he taught us. Let's see Romans chapter 13. From verse 1, we're going to read through to verse 8. It's a long read. But very interesting. Romans 13. Everyone must oh, Romans chapter. Okay, read for us. Everyone must submit himself to the governing authorities. For there is no authority except that which God has established. Now, the Bible says every man must what? Must submit himself for what to authority to what to the governing authority that is talking about the, the rulers of the nation. For there is no what authority. authority except the one that who established. God has established. Now, the cardinal assignment of the ministers is to what is to make sure that what that godly men are what are what are enthroned. So it is the ruler, it is the responsibility of the minister, the priest and the prophets to what? To partner with God in what? In establishing what? The people to rule because God is the one that establishes rulers. What is our responsibility as ministers of the gospel? To what? To partner with what? With God in what? In establishing what? Righteous rulers. Authority, God, 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 godly authorities. That is verse one. Who? Verse Let me see verse one for another version for one that's from NLT. Everyone must submit to governing authorities. Mm. So we have to submit to them. So, but how will it be when you submit to wicked people who are like lions? Eh? When you submit to wicked people who are like even even wolves, what will they do? They will tear the people apart. They will be terrorizing the people. So that is why the minister must be involved in what? In the establishment of what? Of the rulers of the nation. Of the authority. Governing authority. So we, are, we have the duty to, to submit. But look at, remember what the people have to the people of Israel in, in Egypt. They submitted, they had to submit to, 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 to Pharaoh. But was it, what was happening to them? They had to cry to the Lord. Our leaders are Pharaohs. And we have to submit to them because they bear rules. And why, why do we have Pharaoh ruling us? We can be ruling us because the minister, those who are supposed to partner with God, fail in their responsibility to partner with God. Uh -huh. Let's continue. For all authority comes from God, and those in positions of authority have been placed there by God. <laughs> Where does authority come from? From God. Those who are in place, who place them? God. So it is the ministers of the gospel that what? That supposed to partner with God to place people in authority. 
it is an error for people to what to place anybody. So when we, the ministers of the gospel, neglected our duty of partnering with God to place righteous people in the throne, what happened? The devil did what? The devil hijacked and put his own people on the throne. We kept on the throne. It's going to, pro- it's going to prosper and to, to advance his agenda and his kingdom. Amen. God is the one that puts them there. But we neglected our duty of partnering with God to put the right people there. What did the devil do? The devil hijacked it and what? And now put his own people there. And wickedness is raining from Nigeria to, 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 to Ghana. From Ghana to South Africa. South Africa to other countries of the world. Wickedness are the highest order. Leaders who are wolves have taken over everywhere. So wicked things are what they are promoting. Amen. Because we neglected our responsibility. The devil took advantage and placed his own people on the throne. Hallelujah. Have you seen the, 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 the way it's going? So what did happen to us? Where the Bible told us expressly that those in authority, they are what? They are what? They are put there by who? By God. So, and you know that the ministers of the gospel are the people that what? That stand between God and, the, and, and, and his people. And this is what we saw in the Bible. We saw the priest and prophet partnering with God in the Bible to what? To install leaders. We saw in, in 1 Samuel chapter 8, I mean yesterday in our Bible reading, I mean, yes. we saw how Samuel was the one that, is, that, that made the king. Because the priest and prophet, they are what? They are king makers. They make the king. They partner with God. They hear God. God give them direction. And they in turn give the people direction. And they mobilize the people to what? To do the need. It is our responsibility to what? To ensure that what? That it is the people whom God have chosen. The one God. The one whom God have appointed. Because you all say God, they are what? They are appointees of God. Is that what your Bible says? Leaders are what? Read again. Read all through again. Everyone must submit to governing authority, for all authority comes from God. And those in position of authority have been placed there by God. Who placed them? God. God. So, it's if God is the one that placed them, how did God place them? We saw how God placed Saul as the king of Israel. We saw how God placed David as the king of Israel. We saw, but we saw how did God place them there? Through what? God did not jump down. How did he place them? He placed them in partnership with the, with the priests. Amen. So, if a leader must be placed in Nigeria, the way it's supposed to be is supposed to be the ministers that should have partnered with God and disciple the people to world to now to now place that man on the throne. That is what it's supposed to be. They are placed by God. How did God place them? They don't get there by themselves. They don't get to the throne by themselves. But they all happen. We neglected God's what our responsibility. And the devil took advantage and began to place his people there. Who plays the people there? The devil begins to place his people there. That's why we need to study Revelation chapter 17. That's why I need to see. For she, that woman stood upon what? Upon, upon the scarlet beast that have how many heads? Seven heads and what? And ten horns. No, is it seven heads? And they say they are what? They are, they are, they are what? They are mount, they are, they are what? They are, they are seven mountains. And ten kingdoms. How many kingdoms? Ten thrones. Ten thrones. We allow Mr. Babylon to hijack our nation. Like a hijack many nations of the world. Ruling. Ruling. Ruling nations. We, we, are, we, want, we neglect our responsibility. And the devil hijacked it. And then wolves, lions took over. And began to what? And began to what? And, be, and become and began to endanger the life of the people. Eh? Go to verse two. Let's see. Uh-huh. 
Verse 2. So anyone who rebels against authority is rebelling against what God has instituted. And they will, and they will be punished. So who is instituted of instituted authority? God is instituted. God is the one that instituted. How? In partnership with his priest. Uh -huh, continue. Verse 3. For the authorities do not strike fear in people who are doing right, but in those who are doing wrong. Would you like to live without fear of the authorities? Do what is right and they will honor you. Let me see for another version. That's verse 3. Verse 3. I love the one. The are not a terror to good works, mm -hmm. but to the evil. Without them, not be afraid of the power. So rulers are meant to be what? Terror to evil. But how come we have rulers today who are what? Who are what? Yeah, who are terror to good? Evil. Today, no, it's opposite. What is happening is opposite. When godly leaders are on throne, what happens? They become terror to what? To evil. But when Satan places leaders on the throne, what do they happen? They become lions and wolves. They become terror to good. That which is good, and mm -hmm. thou shalt have praise of the same. But today is not the same. Do we bad? I will tell you one of that one, one, one of our, our, our town man who is a who is a who is in charge of one office in, in Kogi State. And then uh, you know uh, Yayabelo wanted to use him to, to steal. The man refused that he will not, he can't do that. And then Yayabelo had to remove him. I told you now, Yayabelo removed from his position because the man said he will not do it. They become terror, so they demoted him. Because the man refused to what? To partner in evil. So look how this happening today. If they come to office and refuse to help them to siphon money, they will remove you and put another person in. That's what is happening. So most civil servants' hands are soiled because they have to partner with the people in power to be able to eat money. So they are used to the money now. And then if, if a new person comes, they tell him how to eat money. Peter B was saying so now. That when he became no governor, they brought land for him to sign. They brought this one for him to sign. This one. I say, ah, what is this? What is this? Are they coming for this kind of thing? I came here to help the people. See, because he said they are the one that the civil servant the one that will corrupt the when, when people come to power. This is how we used to do it before. Ah, this one, at least you sign one billion, at least. Mm -hmm. Whatever you have, give us. That is what your people have been doing, and they are making money. Wickedness. Let me see. Let's go. Let's continue. Let me see verse 4. From NIV. Let me, let me see verse 4. For he is God's servant to do you good. But if you do wrong, be afraid. Now, uh, wait, he said his word. Have you finished this for? No. Okay. For his word. He's God's servant to do you good. Uh -huh. But if you do wrong, be afraid, for he does not bear this word for nothing. Now, let me tell you something. The leaders who are taking our money and, 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 and eating our money, are they doing us good? No. Can you call them God's servant? Yeah. They're not God's servant. Because God didn't place them there. The devil placed them. They are, the, they are servant of the devil. But this is the ideal situation. What do I call it? Ideal situation. Ideally, Nigeria president is, is supposed to be a servant of God. And he's supposed to what? Supposed to do good to the people, not bad. Whatever they're doing should be people centered. When you hear Atiku talk, you know that man is, is a man, is a, what is driving Atiku is ambition. What is driving through is ambition. They don't have vision for Nigeria. No vision. Ambition. It's ambition. It's ambition. ambition. Somebody was saying something which I believe. He said, he said uh, Tunubu is, is a miloko. Okay, it was uh, this kind of Konko. He said Tunubu is a, mil a miloko of the southern Nigeria. Why Atiku is a miloko of, of northern, northern Nigeria? Nigeria? That there are two milokos. Ambitious men. They have nothing good they want to do for Nigeria. He was, I think he was saying um, that when he come, that uh, the people are asking how he's going to raise the money. He said, he, say, he will sell uh, Portacot refinery. He will sell Wari refinery. He will sell this one. Selling, selling, selling. That's how he sold labor to himself. No, not only one person bought. It's Adamawa that he has bought now. They bought, they shared, they shared it to themselves. He bought Adamawa electric. They bought, they shared it to themselves. Shared it to themselves. So they want to come and share the remaining property of Nigeria to themselves, and live and live and live and 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 make Nigeria to become inheritance of their of their children and great grandchildren. Why the remaining Nigerians remain slaves? The below comes. Amen. Amen. Look at the money they are eating. They say to be Lagos landlord. Almost all the property of Lagos. There was a time I watched something a documentary where they were they were counting property of government. The government held before Tunubu came to power that he confiscated and made, the, and made them his own property. 
If there's even Lagos State uh, Liaison Office in, in Abuja, I think part of what he said, they say he, he took it over and make it his own. Many things. In Milokons. But Basuja said the money article, article, article 8 can feed 300 million people for how many, how many years? Is it how many, how many years he will feed them? A whole nation. 300 million. Hallelujah. Our li- the people leading, are they doing us good? They are, they are lions to us. They are even wolves to us. They are devouring and tearing us. You know why? You don't blame them. Blame who? The people that should have partnered with God to bring, um, to bring about righteous men on the throne. They failed. They neglected the throne to the people to do, to occult men and to, and to devil to do what the devil wants to do. Stand up. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. So do we see what the Bible is saying? Where are we? We're in the New Testament. We're not in the Old Testament. We're in Romans. The first most crucial, you know, Apostle Paul's, you know, later. Uh, continue to verse 4. Let's see from NIV. From verse 4. You have read verse 4. Go to verse Okay, I'm not through. God's servant, uh-huh. an agent of God, to bring punishment on the wrongdoer. So, they are supposed to punish corrupt people. People who take corrupt, they are supposed to punish Boko Haram. But they have a leader punish Boko Haram. Yeah. They are supposed to punish banditries, kidnappers for ransom. <laughs> are they punishing them? They are even saying that, no, they are their people. They are their people, so they should not punish them. So they are the Amen. You know, you know Shegumi was saying recently that they should vote for somebody who will not fight Boko Haram and fight bandits. Imagine that kind of nonsense. Yes, they should vote for somebody who will not fight them. Yeah. Whereby, leaders are supposed to be what? They are supposed to be terror, terror to what? To evil work. They are, they are what? They are God's servant to do what? Read again. God's servant to do what? Yeah, he is God's servant, an agent of wrath. Mm-hmm. So bring punishment on the wrongdoer. So the wrongdoer, to be, look at them, should be punished. Full and he to be punished. But look at the, all the, all the wickedness full and he has been doing. Worry. Was president, he didn't work, but he didn't do anything. He didn't punish the people for any because they are his kinsmen. They are his brother. But I pop look by them, very land against them. Began to send them, bombard them, kill them. But his brothers are in the bush, terrorizing the whole middle bed, and he's doing nothing. And even part of the south is doing he's doing nothing about it. So is that what we want again? Do we want that again? We want a man that we want that will punish wrongdoers. Punish corrupt people. If you steal under him, you go to jail. Not this one that Buari. Look at the way the stealing that is going on. Now under Buari, now rat, they swallow money, cut, they swallow money, snake, everything, everything. All his leader, uh, uh, account general, account, uh, 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 yeah, everything. Hey. All of them swallow money everywhere. And the man that came came to come and fight corruption. Which corruption did he come and fight? So, can, should we watch and continue and leave our nation to continue like this? No, we can't continue like this. We have a responsibility towards changing the change. Uh-huh. Let me see what you are. Read on. Verse 5. Uh-huh. Therefore, it is necessary to submit to the authorities, mm-hmm. not only because of possible punishment, mm-hmm. but also because of conscience. Mm-hmm. This is also why you pray, why you pay taxes. Mm-hmm. But the authorities are God's servants. They are what? God's servants. Politics is a ministry. Quality, they give, they give their word to, to govern. The same way me, Moses Gospel, I'm a full-time minister. That is how God have word, have appointed some people to be what? Full-time governing authorities. Who are they? They are the as I am a minister of the gospel, they are toward the minister of God. It is not only pastor that are what? That are minister. Is that not what your Bible say? Let me see what from NFC. I will not be as if NIV. I mean NLT. What NLT says, verse 5. So you must submit to them, mm-hmm. not only to avoid punishment, mm-hmm. but also to keep a clear conscience. Mm-hmm. Pay your taxes too, mm-hmm. for these same reasons. Now, do you know, when you read uh, First Samuel chapter 8, the Bible, they were told, somebody should open that, you hold on. Oh, yeah, open to First, first Samuel chapter 8 for me. Yes. Are you there? Now, go to a place, the Bible said the people will pay tenths of whatever they have to the king. Go there. Do you know that, now look at it. The Bible said the, the people should bring tent or what they have to what? To the priests. Now, listen, 
Be, please give me attention, please. The priests collect tenths of what people have. Do you know why? Because the priests are the ministers of God. In order to administer in what? In the temple. Now, the king also, the rulers also collect 10%. Do you know why? Because they are also what? Ministers of God. They need to what? They need to, they need to run. They need to what? They need to sustain themselves and what? And administer as ministers of God. Are you not saying now? So we should understand this. And what about when you are not paying your tax, you are actually defaulting also. You are, you are defaulting as somebody who is not. So we, mo- we have to pay tax. We have to pay tithes. Tithes is for the house of God. Th- tax is for what? Is for the what? Is for also the what? The running of the governance that God has placed in authority. Have you got something this morning? Why do you pay task? Because you are a citizen of that nation. Why do you pay tight? Because you are what? You are a part of the body of Christ. Am I saying something here? Yes. I think people need to go and watch our, 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 our teaching. We had, we had a series of teaching LRC on what, on what we call tight theology. Yeah. I think about how many series? I think it's about seven or ten series on that series. Go to the global of the YouTube. Please follow that thing, that teaching. So when I hear people come and say eh, that the, we are New Testament and eh, that tight is Old Testament, I want to slap them because they, are, they should keep quiet. They are, they, are, they, are, they, are, they are ignorant men and women. And yet the same people pay tax to government and don't want to pay tax to God. Amen. Amen. In church, you pay tax to advance the kingdom of God. In the nation, you pay tax to what? To advance your word, the way for the welfare. Now, the task you pay to the government is for what? Is for the welfare of the rulers and the nation. The task you pay in the tithe you pay in church is what? Is for the welfare of the priests and what? And the advancement of God's work. The task you pay to the nation is for what? Is for the welfare of the rulers and what? And to advance the cause of the nation. Are you hearing something this morning? Tithe is for what? For the welfare of the ministers of the gospel and what, and for the advancement of what of the things of, and of, of the kingdom of God. The task you pay to the nation is what is for the welfare of the rulers of the governing bodies and the what, and for the advancement of what, and for the advancement of the course of the nation. As the pastor is the minister of God, so is the king and the rulers. The senators, the House of Assembly members, amen. The words, what I call them, the governors of the states, amen. The, 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 the prime ministers, the president of nations. Who are they? Who are they? I said they are who? They are servants of the Lord. The same way the devil hijacked the church of God and then polluted the house of God and brought in false point. That is how the devil also have hijacked governance and what and have brought evil and corrupt leaders. They must be, they must not be allowed to continue. They must not be what? They must be disallowed. Amen. As a pastor is important to the destiny of what? To the destiny of, of, of a eternal destiny. But that is how king also are what? Are important to the destiny of a, of, of a people. Your pastor can make you lose heaven. Your also ruler can make you lose heaven. What do I say? Your pastor can make you to lose your eternal destiny. Amen. And also, and also the king who rules your nation can also make you rule your eternal destiny. Very important. Amen. Because you have to submit to them. By what? By divine mandate. You have to submit to them. But what if they say they put gay? What if they put lesbianism? What if they put abortion law? Will you submit to them? No. Then if you really submit to them, then you should be ready for their rod. Amen. You should when they lock down the place and say COVID-19, who can, who, can anybody close open church? Eh? They could open church because we have to submit to them because ideally they are what? They are God's servant, but now the devil's servant have taken over the, the pulpit church and they took over the nation also. And that's why the Bible said the whole light in wickedness. First John chapter 2. The devil took over. He had, Mr. Babylon hijacked the church. He also hijacked the world. Hijacked the seat of authority of the nation. So that you go to church, you are not safe. You go to you you go you you, you come you come out of church, no safe place. <laughs> Praise the Lord. Yeah. 
Am I speaking to God's children here this morning? Yes, sir. Are you hearing the word of God? Yes, sir. Am I still preaching the gospel? Yes, sir. <laughs> this is the gospel of the kingdom of Jesus. What I'm preaching is what? It is the gospel of the kingdom of Jesus. I'm preaching the gospel of the kingdom to you. This is the kingdom issue. If we are going to advance God's kingdom on the earth, we need to what? We need to be in a right place of authority. We need to ensure the righteous rule. I don't care what you think, what you want, you want to preach. You know, you know, you know, when we're in degree, there is this guy in Medigree, when we're talking about some of these things in Medigree, he was saying, no, kingdom of God, kingdom of God, kingdom of God. And he ran to the east because he left Medigree. Because the same thing was talking. They drove, they drove, they drove me away from, he couldn't stay in Medigree, ran from Medigree for, to, to east. And when he went to east again, I pop and this, he met him, they met him there again. I know wherever wherever he is now, he'll be saying, I don't say Pastor Gospel. I used to say when my degree. I know he'll listen to me now if, if I had to see. These are issues. The righteous need to rule. Uh -huh, let's continue. Where are we? Why have we finished verse five? Six. Okay. Pay your taxes too. Mm -hmm. For these same reasons, for government workers need to be paid. They are serving God in what they do. <coughs> what, is that? what verse is that? Six. Pay your what? What do you pay? Your taxes. For what? They are what? Government workers need to be paid. You know, the hypocrisy of people that don't want to pay. And somebody was saying one time when I was teaching time, and the pastor should go and walk. They should go and walk. They should go and walk. Nonsense of nonsense. What do you know? Keep your mouth quiet. One, one was responding to my, that's something I sent yesterday. Amen. About uh, that uh, ministers of the gospel, priests and prophets and kingmakers. One man say, eh, that this one now, that we are taking it too far, that we are diverting attention from the real gospel. And as I say, you are an ignorant, ignorant man, and pride is what is destroying you. People don't know, they don't want to, they don't want to listen to people who know. Ignorant. And pride don't allow them to open themselves to learn. I'm talking to you, what, what is the, 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 the issues of the kingdom? You are, you are opening your mouth and saying what you don't know. He said, what do you do? That man, you know, that, uh, that person should go and walk. They should talk, talk like that to go and walk. But the same people, hypocrisy, they pay tax, they pay tax to the government. That is hypocrisy. A Christian who pays tax to government and does not pay tithe in church is a hypocrite. He cannot go to heaven. What do I say? A Christian that what? That pay what? Tax to government. Because, you know, government will detect automatically. Yes. When you are working, government did not tax automatically. <laughs> They did not, they charge, can't you, they, you pay tax automatically. But, but now church, oh, nine, nine devil, they sponsor so that, so that they, so that, you know, you know, that is why genuine ministers are suffering. Genuine pastors are suffering. Because members don't pay tithes. They're suffering because members don't pay tithes. Because they are, they are, they are, they are, what? they are, they are, they are being indoctrinated. What happened? Indoctrination. You know, we said there's seven things. Amen. That make people to what? Make people to lose their words. They are lose their, to lose their word. We say that is the last. They are helping that seventy that make people to sin. Yes, number one we say is what wrong teaching, indoctrination. Praise the Lord. The indoctrination. They indoctrinate people. Uh -huh. Go for read on verse six for us. Mm -hmm. Give to everyone what you owe them. No, pay your, no read read all over verse six. Pay your taxes too, for these same reasons. <sighs> For government workers need to be paid. Mm. They are serving God in what they do. They are, what are they doing? They are Nigeria God. president is supposed to be a servant of God. The senator is supposed to be. Now, when you are going into government office, you are, you are a politician. You want to go. Now, people don't understand that uh, the people with government office, they don't know that they are, they are, they are servant of God. We think that is only pastor servant of God. That is an error. A policeman, first and foremost, is what? The servant of God. A soldier is the servant of God. So now, if a Christian is going to politics, he must what? He must have the mentality that I'm what? I am a servant of God here. Not your belly first. So as a servant of God, he what? He receives money, payment of salaries, just to what? For his welfare. But who is he serving? He's serving God. Who is the senator? A senator is not there for his belly. But today is the other way around. People are in politics because they want to, because of gain, because of what they will gain. And one of the reasons why Christians are where they are in politics is because a Christian is in politics because of what he will get. But a Muslim is in politics because of what they will get. You see the difference, man? When a Muslim gets into political power, he is more interested in what they 
talking about what Islam will gain and what the caliphate will gain than what he will get. So what he gets is second, secondary. But unfortunately, a Christian is a politics because of what, you can see down now, because of what, what who? What he will get. And that was why the Christians have not been united in having an agenda to bring in a righteous leader. So, the, it is not only church ministry that is ministry. Politics is a ministry. Go and read our book, The Common Prophet Scholars of Islam. It's an Amazon bookstore. By myself, most of the social. I wrote about the nine prophet battles that will collapse in Islam and restore a nation. And one of those battles that I wrote extensively is about what? Is about politics. Politics is a ministry. If, if we don't play, then we jeopardize our eternity. So many are backslidden because of, of, of oppression. They are young men, they have finished job, no job for them. And their mates who are in Islam are getting job immediately before they finish the job, it's already located there. And that is why some of them have decided to, to convert to Islam. It's happening all over the north and all over Nigeria. Your mates who you graduate from, before you know, a Muslim is already driving Jeep and having an appointment. And then you'll be wondering, what kind of thing is this? Now? And, our, and our children are losing, are losing hope in what we are doing. They are getting fed up of this Christianity. Because we, we, we neglected one vital ministry. What do I call it? One cardinal ministry of the church. We judge the devil in the name of Jesus. Amen. I, also, I want to stop here. I want us to pray. We, we can go all the way. I can continue teaching for the next, for the whole of this day. I have not even gone halfway. Even the scripture I want to read. I'm not even finished reading. We judge the, the spell of ignorance that came upon the church. Let's begin to pray. Let's start by beginning to pray. Every spell that makes us to neglect politics, minister of politics, we command that spell to be judged. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Let me just help ignorant people a little bit. Let me just give you two more New Testament scriptures. Because I gave you how many Old Testament? Three, two Old Testament. Let me, let me make New Testament scriptures for three for this, for this six. So that ignorant men can be silenced. Are we there with me? Yes. Okay, let me give you another scripture. Let's go to 1 Timothy chapter 2, verse 1 to 3. Amen. 1 Timothy 2, 1 to 3. And then uh, Romans chapter 12, verse... Uh, okay, let's, no, let's do that one first. Then Titus chapter 3, verse 1 to 2. Let me give you those three. I'll, I'll leave Romans, the other Romans. Anyone you see? Titus 3, 1 to 2. 1 Timothy 2, 1, 1, 2, 1 to 3. Uh -huh. I asked them then, first of all, mm -hmm. that the request, mm -hmm. prayers, intercessions, and tests giving be made for everyone. Mm -hmm. For kings and all those... For kings and for what? All those in authority. All those in authority. That we may live peaceful and quiet life. Uh -huh. In all godliness and holiness. That they may live full kind of life. Peaceful and quiet. In all what? In all godliness. You cannot pray for a for a wicked man to live godly life. If you put when we're saying they should not put body in part, they say eh, they, the body was they pray. You can't pray for body to live a godly life because it does not have what it takes to live a godly life. How can you put a wicked man on try begin to pray for him to do to do good? Do they have what it takes to do good? Ignorant people. How can you put an enemy in, of God in 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 to do to do work of God? Ministry is, is a policy is a ministry. Governance is a ministry. You put somebody who's an enemy of God to administer in God's in, in God's ministry, and you expect to see good results. I don't know. 
Do you want Tunubu to become Nigerian president and you expect something good to come out of Tunubu presidency? Particularly to see something good. You can't see anything good. These guys are enemy of the gospel. You can't see anything good. It is, you can't pray. Prayer does not work that way. Bible say, when the foundation before the work and the righteous do, you have put a, a wrong person there. I want to pray for prayer. It's true that prayer is magic. Prayer is not magic. Somebody who is not born again, you want to pray for him to do good. Does he have what it takes to do good? Read on for me. That's best. Yeah, yeah, read on, read on, read on. This is good and pleases God our Savior. Mm. Who wants all men to be saved mm. and to come to a knowledge of the truth? The Lord wants everybody to be saved and to what? Let me see from NLT. 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 What the NLT says? First Timothy chapter 2, verse 1 to 3. I urge you first of all mm -hmm. to pray for all people. Mm -hmm. Ask God to help them, uh -huh. intercede on their behalf, and give thanks for them. Mm -hmm. Pray this way mm -hmm. for kings and all who are in authority uh -huh. so that we can live peaceful and quiet lives marked by godliness and dignity. Oh, yeah, 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 yeah. This is good and pleases God our Savior. Uh -huh. That's all. That was three? Yes. And that they can live the life of what? The life of this to live. Oh, so that they can live peaceful and quiet life. Marked can. by godliness and dignity. Dignity. To pray for them. To life. live godly life. You put an ungodly man in a position, you are gone. It is when a righteous man is there. Paul, you know, when you read the, the prayer of Paul for the church, when they come out, the Paul began to pray for them for what? For wisdom, for knowledge, I mean for revelation. For Can't pray that prayer for an ignorant man. The prayer for an ignorant man is what? It's for him to be saved. To be born again. So you don't pray for Barry to go to do good. Pray for Barry to be born again. If you put a you put the for the pray for him to be born again. Okay, finish you doing it. Finish you. If God help you and he got born again, when you're the true fine. But if God's gonna be born again, he'll be what like what? He'll be a lion and what? And a bear. And devour and tear. And become a terror to the people that should have what? That you should have protected. Let's see the other scripture. Titus. Titus chapter 3, verse 1 to 3. Amen. Remind the people to be subject to rulers. To be what? Submissive. That is to be submissive to rulers. Uh -huh. An authority. An authority. Uh -huh. To be obedient. Uh -huh. To be ready to do whatever is good. Mm -hmm. To slander no one. Mm -hmm. To be peaceable and considerate. Mm -hmm. And to show true humility toward all men. The people to be what? What do they should be to be to rulers? The people to be what? Subject to rulers. Not your own. Let me see your own. Verse 1. Remind the believer to submit to the government and its officers. Mm -hmm. They should be obedient, always ready to do what is good. They must not slander anyone and must avoid quarreling. Instead, they should be gentle and show one and show true humility to everyone. Amen. So, how can you put eh, a dragon on the throne and you ask the people to submit to dragon? Eh? You put dragon. You say supposed to submit to dragon. Yes, sir. The people are supposed to submit to who? To the people who rule. That is why we must make sure that the wrong people don't get to the authority, to the seat of rulership. Because there is a divine mandate for us to submit to the rulers. So, but if the priest fails and the wrong people rules, the people must submit, Abi, by fire, by force. Because they bear, they bear the sword. That is what happening today. Before Fulani will come, then Kaduna, Sujia will come and, and come and do search and collect weapons from people. In the no, two, one or two days, Fulani, Fulani will come and attack and they will kill people. Can you, when Sujia come to collect guns for me, can you refuse? Hmm. When Fulani are attacking people, the neighbor villagers are coming to go, to go and help them. Sujia will refuse them to go until Fulani attack and go and escape. You have to what? You must submit. Because they be a rule. So, how did the wicked get to the place of authority? The failure is on the priest and the prophet. And now is the time to correct it, this error. We are going to pray, Lord, we will not make mistake again in this nation. Can you begin to pray in the name of Jesus? Lord, these people will not, get, they, the wicked men will not rule us again. Ah, Maradabalabali. 
because they are dangerous to the poor. They will not rule again. Shanda rada da bala bala bala. Kuriba na malaya. Lord, cause your church to wake up to our responsibility. Are you pray. Close your eyes and pray for the oil. Stop the internet and pray. Oya. Kali bodo boya. Pray. Close your eyes and pray. Stand up. Eh marada balai. Cause your church to wake up to our responsibility, to our political responsibility. One that leave that place and face it and say, "Where? Kabala balu." Rekoto ba yebo deya pray pray pray. I want you to pray. It's time to pray. Our nation can't continue like this, Lord. Cause your church to wake up from our slumber. Let the spell be broken in the name of Jesus. Inko zaga bara bara. Malege de bo bo bo. Inde lege de bo 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 ya karada bala. Power, power belongs to God. Oh, power. Amen. Father, we ask that you bring this understanding to your church mm. in the name of Jesus Christ. Mm. We commit this week to your hands. We ask that you. The Lord bless you richly, brethren. You know, the fact is that we have a responsibility to submit to our lead to leaders, men in authority. But how can we submit to our enemies? How did the enemy get to the throne? And we came, we are under our turn to submit to them. May the enemy not rule us again. We will not submit to the enemy because they will not get there any longer. In the name of Jesus, I remain your brother, Musa Jesha Mego Special, the coordinator of National Restoration Program and National Master Salvation Project. I want to urge you that if this message has blessed you, please don't keep it to yourself. Help us to share it. Help us to preach it. Help us to promote it. You can promote it instantly on the social media by liking this video. There is a press the like button. Then drop comment on your questions. And also what? Share it to your all your platforms, Facebook, uh, Twitter, Instagram, uh, uh, WhatsApp, Telegram. Share it. Let it go viral. Spread the gospel. Spread this gospel. And don't forget to subscribe to this channel. And also invite other people. Share and invite them to come and share, subscribe. So that every as we upload the teachings, you'll be getting them. You'll be getting this teaching. And God will bless you. And the Lord will bless our nation. And don't forget the Feast of Rapture is by the corner. If the Lord has blessed you and you want to support us, please you can contact the number on the screen. It's a WhatsApp, no, it's a WhatsApp number. Or you, get, or you want to attend. Attend or you want to sponsor a missionary. From uh, from uh, Taraba, from uh, Bruno, from Adamawa, from Platzi, you want to sponsor some of them that have bodies as much as two and three, are forty thousand, some thirty thousand. So if God is willing to support them, please contact us, and then uh, you'll be able to reach out to us and support. Or if you want to come yourself, I'll be blessed. Please come. The accommodation is here. It is here free for you. Come, and then the Lord will bless you, and you will be part of this historic meeting that is going to lead to revival. Shalom, 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 and God bless you. Our number is zero eight zero. Three three nine two one two one. Let me take the game. Zero eight zero three three nine two one two one three. Our code is plus two three for Nigerian code. The Lord bless you. I look forward to a chat or a message from you. God bless you.